and here in the city of Lagos, Oshodi to be precise, on this roof, we have 10 units of 500 watt solar panels, half cut, and these are Seaworth brand. So the connection we did here, everything is in series because uh, the inverter is a Seaworth brand and we are generating around 400 to 470 volt from this uh, 10 unit of 500 watt solar panels because the inverter can handle such voltage because it's not just a hybrid inverter but hybrid solar inverter that means it can work with high voltage or even work without batteries if possible so i'll take you guys down show you the battery and show you the inverter and tell you what this size of solar energy system is capable of you know powering so here on the roof like i said a 10 unit of 500 watt solar panels each everything connected in series that means all these panels depend on one another to work this depend on the other one so if one of these goes off circuit become incomplete and the whole system will stop working so i'll take you guys down now show you what we did on the ground and here is the full setup for a 10 kilowatt power battery and the 5.5 kilowatt inverter so down here is the 10 kilowatt 48 volt Seaworth brand battery. It has an indicator switch to show you that the battery is running. It will also show you an alarm if the current coming from the solar panel is too high and it will show you this battery empty. And also it has a temperature indicator. If the temperature is too high or too low, it will display here. So this, uh, uh, this interface has a sort of soft touch. So if you touch it, it can change between the temperature and the voltage. So it will only show you the battery voltage and show you the battery bar. And aside that, the manufacturer of this battery recommends 98% depth of discharge. That is huge. You can consume this battery up to 98% depth of discharge and just have 2% left for the battery to start charging the next day. So the battery has a breaker switch here, a DC breaker switch to put it off. That means to put the output off. Once you put this breaker off, the power, power won't be reaching the inverter. So it has two switch. This switch controls the BMS and controls uh, the indicator or the screen. And also uh, it comes with a communication cable that you can connect from uh, the battery to the inverter. So right now the inverter and uh, the battery are not communicating though it's not something I can see. So this, like I said, is a 10 kilowatt 48 volt uh, LiPo 4 battery which we replace with uh, tubular batteries. We had uh, initially they had uh, four tubular batteries, that's 220 amps. And according to the person, I'm the third person handling this installation for them. The other two failed because you know it was a poor system. The distance from the roof to where the panels are is a very far distance, and the current that will be coming from the solar panel is too low, so the batteries have not been charging. So we are the third person to handle his installation. We decided to use a high voltage hybrid solar inverter. 5.5 kilowatt Seaworth brand. This inverter have the ability of handling high voltage up to 500 volt uh, DC. It's not just any it's not just an ordinary hybrid inverter. If you observe, it being written hybrid solar inverter. That means this inverter will be capable of working without the battery. So if you give it just solar panels, it can convert the excess voltage into current and you know power your load during the day. Let's see the amount of energy coming from the solar panels right now. On the roof, we have uh, 5 kilowatt power of solar energy coming to this inverter. Like I said, it's hybrid. So let's see what is coming from uh, the solar panels. So we have about 386 volts coming from uh, the solar panels. Though on the roof, we connected everything in series. We have 10 500 watt solar panels. Everything connected in series will generate at least 400 to you know 450 volts. This is 10 o'clock in the morning. So with time the voltage might increase to 400 volts. So let's see the current. Okay, the PV current coming is three amps coming from the solar panel right now. Like I said, the distance from this where the solar panel is to where this inverter is is very far. But let's see how much conversion this inverter is doing. So if you can see this, the energy 1.2 kilowatts coming from the solar panels and the energy conversion is about 17 amps. So uh, this inverter boosts the three amps to about 17 amps in order to charge this battery. So with this, you know, it will take the battery about four to five hours to get filled. But right now, the reason why the battery is not even charging at high speed is because there are some load that are being consumed right now. If you can see, the inverter is working. 
and the output is you know 229 volts so let's see the amount of energy that is being consumed right now so we have about 400 and let's say 80 watt load that is being consumed it's inverter that is about 12 percent load so if you observe we had uh, 1.2 kilowatts that's 1200 watts uh, energy coming from the solar panel so that is capable of handling this load about 400 watts to be supporting this load or 450 watts to be supporting that amount of load and the remaining 800 watts will be coming to the battery which is a good one so this amount of energy can be consumed and the battery will still be charging at the same time that is the advantage of oversizing your system so right now we have one fridge and one deep freezer working then so you know lighting point so the main reason why we did this installation is to uh, like power the deep freezer one fridge you know uh aps tv and probably have one horsepower ac running during the day from the solar panels to the inverter to the battery everything is seaworthy.